And now, the survival show that once survived, debating the merits of Felix the Cat with Billy Gibbons at 4 a.m. in the morning over biscuits and gravy. In this episode, author Chris Pike drops by. She's going to share with us how she crafted her EMP Survivor series just for you. Howdy and welcome to In the Rabbit Hole's Urban Survival Podcast. This is episode number 274. I'm your host, Aaron, and you are in the rabbit hole. Safe and sound. A quick note before we dive in today. There was a video hiccup and it lasts for about a minute into this episode. The audio shouldn't be impacted, but the video sorts itself out after about a minute. Now, on to the show. Howdy, Chris, and welcome to In the Rabbit Hole. Hi, Aaron. Thanks for having me. So now you are the author of the EMP Survival series. Um, but before we get into that, of course, we'd like to know you a little bit better. This this is a book club episode, and this is one of the best parts. Is we actually get to know a little bit more about who the author is behind the, uh, I guess I can't say typewriter anymore, behind the keyboard. So how did you come to writing? Is it something you started early <laughs> yeah. in life and just got into, or, or is it something that you came back later in life? How, how did that work for you? Well, the seeds were planted a long time ago in college. I went to the University of Texas, and I had to write a lot of term papers. And regardless of how much I tried, how much research I did, I could never get an A. If I was lucky, I'd get a B. So in my senior year, I thought, well, I'm going to do something different. And when I was a senior in college, I was working at the state capitol for one of the uh, representatives uh, at in the Texas legislature. Um, so I know a little bit about how politics worked, and, and I was I had um, access to some really old computers. And um, I got an idea when I wrote the term paper to use like a real life scenario. So I created something, and instead of just writing this really dull paper, I created this this scenario on on one of the the, the state representatives. Uh, he told his assistant, you know, I need you to do this research. So I presented the paper. It wasn't any better than anything else I had written. Well, in a class of 150, the professor handed out the 10 best papers. Mine was one of them. Huh. And I thought, well, this is this is really cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try it in another class. So I tried it in another class, and I got an A. And the professor stopped me after class and said, "How did you come up with this idea?" And I just kind of told him, you know, whatever I told him. And then life got in the way, you know, we have kids, you got, you know, drill team and all the other stuff that all the kids do now. And uh, um, that's the seeds were planted then. And then when I really got serious, I started, I, I read a lot and I, re I read a lot of Louis L'Amour books because I love Westerns. Mm. And his writing, have you ever read any of his books? No, I can't say that I have. Okay, well, he's he's a real simple writer. He doesn't use these you know big words and send you to the dictionary going, what does that mean? Uh -huh. He writes real simple, but he really brings the reader into the story by uh, by his descriptions and his dialogue. And it's just, it's so clear how he writes. And I thought, I can do this. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> well, I'm not as successful as he is, uh, as he was, but, um, you know, that's, that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And it, it's all a learning process, all this writing. It's like when you learn to walk, when you're a little baby, you're going to fall down a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I fell down a lot. And I'm still falling down, but I still get back up. Yeah. And, and that's how it started. Uh, a lot of people asked me. Um, I, I joined a, a, writing, a writing group. I went to um, Houston Writers Guild conferences. Uh, they're very good. I connected with other writers, uh, with people that, that edit, and and things like that. So it's really just a process. That's, that's really how I got into it. Yeah, I think writing is always a lot of people want to sit down at the keyboard and just bang out the most amazing thing ever. And it, it really, really works that way. I mean, usually there you, there's some talent and some propensity to do it, some love of writing, uh, almost a masochistic love. Uh, and then, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then from there it's, you know, the first one's usually not very good and you get better and better and better each, each time you try it. Um, it's like anything. Right. 
Uh, what I was going to say is what else I did is that, you know, when, when you write something and you hand it to your friends, they're all going to say, oh, this is really good. You should publish it, et cetera, et cetera, because they don't want to hurt your, your feelings. Right, right. So I entered the stories in writing contests. And because the judges don't know you, they're going to tell you exactly <laughs> what they think. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always it's not always good. Uh-huh. And then but but if you if you if you look at it constructively and you think, okay, this is what I need to improve on. And if you do that, it's very it's very helpful. Mm-hmm. And I, and that's something another tool that I use. I gotcha. So what is your you said L- Louis Lamore, was that his name? Yes, uh Louis Lamore, he is a um a prolific uh, writer in the Western genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is deceased. Uh, he's very, very popular. Uh, the, a Western that came on TV a long time ago, Hondo. Okay. Uh, that was a Louis L'Amour novel. Um, there are some movies uh, with the Sackets with um, uh, the guy that played Magnum, Thomas, uh, Thomas Selleck. Tom mm-hmm. Selleck. Mm-hmm. He was in those. And those are Louis L'Amour novels. Oh, now, what's okay. also interesting is um, his last novel was a survival novel. Hmm. It was called Last Last of the Breed, and it's about an American pilot who gets shot down in Russia, and he has to escape. And he has to escape Russia with really just the clothes on his back. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a tremendous tremendous uh, survival story. So you and, know, and um, I guess that brings and, up the question of how you got into writing prepper slash dystopian fiction. Like, why this genre? How did I get into it? Yeah, yeah. Why this genre? Well, I, I love a good action action book, action um, a movie, mm-hmm. and it just all it just all kind of came together. And uh, my editor kept telling me that I really need to write in this genre. And so together with uh, my husband, uh, we collaborate on the books and he's, uh, he's my, uh, uh, he, he provides all the firearms content. Okay. Um, Cause he's an, he's an expert. Mm. Um, a lot of the prep prepping tips he provides. And so while, uh, you know, I write the story and I come up with the plot and everything, we collaborate on a lot of things. So it all comes together. Okay. And, um, in in the books, uh, I've discovered that in this this genre, that readers like a lot of tips mm-hmm. on prepping, and uh, on Kindle especially, you can see uh, it'll say so many people, you know, twenty five people highlighted, you know, this passage, and a hundred people highlighted this passage, and this is also a very interesting fact. So it gives an author insight into what the readers are really looking for in the books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always assumed that a lot of people want it almost like really reading religious texts like it's and, and just in general the human brain is set up that's the best way for for us to communicate and absorb information is through stories so it makes perfect sense people love good prepper stories that also share solid information mm-hmm. yes and um I, I try to get everything as factual as possible i i do make a few mistakes Hmm. Not perfect. Don't don't tell me. Don't tell my husband. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, but there are mistakes, and and I do get do get emails from readers pointing it out. And I'm very grateful because I get to learn something. Oh, I didn't know that was wrong, and mm-hmm. so I won't make that mistake again. But the the idea that 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 I got when to get for the story, um, the idea came to me while. I was traveling on I-10 heading towards New Orleans. My daughter was going to Tulane at the time, mm-hmm. and you have to cross the Atchafalaya Basin Bridge. I know it well. Are you yeah. familiar with that bridge? Yeah, very, yeah. very, yeah. Yeah, it's long. There's nothing there but swamp and, and, and trees and just, it's just desolate except the swamp. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I wonder what it would be like if you had to walk out of there. Um, and that's, that's how the story started. Well, that's pretty neat. As long as we're there. So walk us into the book. Tell us kind of what our appetites here, what, what happens and, and how do we end up in a swamp? Well, the, the book actually starts in the swamp. I give the, the reader a little bit of a tease on what's going to happen in the book. And the main character um, 
besides the swamp scene, uh, it starts off uh, at the Harris County Courthouse. There's a trial going on between the uh, main character Dylan Stockdale. He is a he is a um, um, he's a district assistant district attorney, mm. and and Holly Holly is a prosecuting attorney. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a defense attorney. Dylan is prosecuting attorney. They they've had they've had a contentious relationship for several years because they've been on opposite sides of the courtroom, and that's where it starts. Um, the EMP happened. And you know, there's a plane crash. There's a lot of action mm-hmm. uh, right off right off the bat. There's a lot of action, and the story develops and evolves. And it's really, and then the side story is Dylan is a widower, and he has one daughter, and she happens to be going to Tulane, mm. and she's on a plane that crashes in the Atchafalaya Basin swamp. And he knows that she's on the plane because she had called him, you know, to tell him that she's getting on the plane and, and, and she would check in with him when, when she lands and he knows. So he's going, because that's his only child, he's going to do whatever he needs to do to go find her. Mm. He knows approximately, you know, where, how far the plane would have gotten and, you know, against all odds, he's going to go find her. And so that's the, the, the premise of the story is a father you know, searching for his daughter. Okay. In, in a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to get out of Texas. I have to get out of Houston first. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's difficult there. If you're familiar with the Heights area, mm-hmm. uh, he has to walk uh, from downtown, from the courthouse, to the Heights area. And then they have to figure out how to get from Houston to Holly's ranch. Mm-hmm. Holly has a ranch in East Texas, and um, they 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 um, th- Dylan was going to to ride the bike all the way to uh, to Louisiana, but he learns that Holly has horses at her ranch, mm-hmm. which comes in really handy mm-hmm. because the cars aren't going to work. So right. it's it's the it's the travel, and there's there's side stories also, not just the journey, but the, the there's bad guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a there's a history uh, between a bad guy and other people in the book, and it all comes together. Uh, books books one and two are a continuing story, and uh, it's a complete story, and and so it just walks the reader through through two 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 stories. Okay, let's take a quick break for this vital message, listener. Do you get at least three dollars a month worth of value out of ITRH? You should see what we do for the Roving Horde Armada members. Check it out today by visiting ITRH.net. Members receive access to the private ITRH Armada Slack group where they get to connect, ask questions, get the news, escape the nonsense in their social media feeds, and shenanigans. Twice a month, members get together on a private virtual roundtable. We discuss guns, meat, news that matters, and other things you just can't talk about with anybody else access to members-only content and every episode ever produced. And that's just to name a few things you get with your membership when you sign up through iturh.net. In the Rabbit Hole is mostly kept on the air and supported by members just like you. Go to iturh.net to find out more and become part of the Roving Horde Armada. Now, back to today's guest. Well, that's pretty neat. So, you know, and you brought up something a little while ago as far as looking at what people are highlighting in the Kindle version of the book. And that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. has that changed the way you write or did you start with a focus on, I guess, let me back up. Are you just trying to write a great story and you mix in some, some good facts and maybe some, some helpful tips or is it the inverse? Are you, you trying to convey a lessons in a message and wrap it in a story as a, a way of being better than a technical manual. It's, it's a little bit of both. Uh, foremost, I want to write a really good story. Mm-hmm. And within that story, there are tips. There are, are prepper tips. Um, for example, in books, in book one, um, the readers highlighted uh, what's included in a backpack. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, we included uh, ammo and a knife, mm-hmm. uh, life straw, water purification tablets, uh, matches, first aid kit. And that was a very popular 
A lot of people, a lot of people uh, highlighted that. Mm -hmm. um, they also highlight, highlighted the firearms content. Mm. Um, that was really important. Um, what type of medicine to look for in a pharmacy? Mm -hmm. One of the characters is injured, and um, because there's no doctors available, they have to go, you know, find the medicine themselves. Um, I talked about good oral, oral hygiene because keeping your teeth clean is important so you don't get a toothache mm -hmm. and an infection, which could lead to really bad things. Mm -hmm. And um, they like that one. Um, there's also one in book two about the sporting goods store. The, uh, there was one in one of the cities, and the characters went into the store um, to see what they could take. Uh, for example, they took a compass a map mm -hmm. because the cell phones aren't going to work. So they need a map mm -hmm. mosquito repellent, um, a change of clothes. Mm -hmm. And there's other interesting things in here. A little, um, something I thought was interesting when, of course, um, um, when the EMP strikes, there's, you know, goods and services won't be available, such as toilet paper and what to do in place of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, cloth strips um, soaked in bleach and uh, rinsed and dried. Hmm. Uh, a lot of people highlighted that. Hmm. That's pretty. It, um, it would be really interesting. Now I'm fascinated by this. That would be really interesting to see what other people highlight in a book. I, I actually don't usually use a Kindle. I use uh, Audible, or I'll buy the physical book. But and it's fun because mm -hmm. a few times I, I have gotten Kindle books. Um, and when I do, it's like, oh, wow, this is neat. You get, you, even as a reader, you get to see what are the things that other people have highlighted and how mm -hmm. many people highlighted mm -hmm. it. Um, and then sometimes you look mm -hmm. at stuff and go, why did so many people highlight that? That's bizarre. <laughs> or you're like, maybe I'm the mm -hmm. fool. So why, <laughs> why an EMP? Well, I, I wanted to, I wanted to break down society uh -huh. and that was the quickest way to do it. Uh, the electrical grid one. goes down. Yeah. Now. With the characters, are these people that you just sit around and you craft avatars and, and do a character study? Or is this something where you typically, you'll, you'll take little bits and pieces or maybe just model it, model a character completely after a person you know? How, do, how does that process work for you? Um, it's a little bit of everything. There are a couple of characters that are uh, loosely modeled after people that I know, mm -hmm. the bad guys especially <laughs> um, there, the bad guys are really easy to write about because their, their, their motives are so transparent to me. Um, the good guys, uh, you know, not so much. It's, it's difficult to get to know them, but for me personally, as an author, um, I have to start writing the book to get to know the characters. And by the end of the book, I really know them and, and they're, they become, they become like friends. So mm -hmm. when the, when the book is over, you're like, oh, it's kind of sad because they're gone now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I felt that way about books that I've read. You know, you get to really love these characters and the series is over. It's like, oh, well, what do I, what do I read now? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, <laughs> I've had a lot of people, you know, write me that they're sad uh, to see the series end. On the other hand, they're also glad it didn't stretch out to 10 or 15 books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a, there's a happy medium. Um, one more thing that was really funny mm -hmm. that people highlighted in the book was the, the recipe for Russian tea. Hmm. That was also very popular because in one of the books, um, the, uh, the lady of the house, uh, she, she's of Russian heritage mm -hmm. and she uh, makes Russian tea for everybody. Okay. And that was actually my mother's recipe. So I thought that was interesting. That was the only recipe I put in the book. <laughs> Lots of people liked it. That's pretty neat. What would you say is the hardest part about writing post-apocalyptic fiction? It's uh, the hardest part is just actually sitting down and writing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of distractions. Yeah, I, I try to make a specific time to write. And if I do, you know, it's easy. It's easy to to edit something. You cannot edit a blank page. Right. That's the way I look at it. So I yeah. I just start writing, and the more I write, uh, the easier it comes, and the more words. And it's just a process of just sitting down at the computer and writing the story. 
I gotcha. Is there, but is there anything about it that is more difficult or just different about writing post-apocalyptic fiction as opposed to some other kind of fiction? Is there anything? I, I, I don't think so. Actually, it's, it's fairly easy for me to write in this genre because I, I like action. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I like bad guys and, and what they do and how the good guys overcome because that's really a, a theme in the books is the good guys overcoming the bad guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I like to write about that. I like those kind of movies. I uh, watch them on Netflix, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at, at the movie theater. So I, I really like the genre. I gotcha. Okay. Well, that's, that's helpful then. It's something that comes easy to you. What? So you have mm-hmm. five mm-hmm. books in the EMP Survivor series. And so have you just started a new series or are you, or is, or is your, your new book uh, a continuation of that series? I have a brand new series. And it's called, the, the series name is American Strong. Mm-hmm. And there'll be several books in the series. And one is, uh, one is already available. It's called Stand Your Ground. And it starts here in Houston. And it's, it's more complicated than my other books. Um, and the reviews are all positive, And people realize that it's different. Okay. And they, they appreciate that. So is it, is it another post-apocalyptic fiction prepper kind of book or, or what kind of book is it? It's post-apocalyptic. It has to do with bio-warfare. Ooh. And uh, there, you know, the society shuts down pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no one to, to run the electrical plants, uh, uh, any of the, you know, the services that, that the cities are rely on. And so the people have to escape the city. And uh, like I said, there, there's side stories in it. Uh, it involves the president and Air Force One. Mm-hmm. Um, a, there's a little bit of sci-fi element in it. Um, a little bit along the, the lines of, of Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it was it was an interesting book for me to write because it's in first person. I've never done that. So okay. uh, it was really a challenge for me. But mm-hmm. it, I'm very happy how the book turned out. Uh, the reviews are positive and readers are loving it. Very cool. So it was biological warfare, a, a more technically challenging book to write. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Um, it, there are certain aspects of the book where, uh, the information there's not really available on the internet. So mm-hmm. you really have to kind of go outside the box and think, what what could this be, and how would this be solved? So a lot of just you know things I had to make up because I'm not privy to that information. Right. Yeah, I've tried to get a few virologists on on the show before, and they're usually very hesitant about talking to people about you're a what? No, I don't want to talk to you. It's kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, how long do you expect this series to go on for? We'll have at least two books, uh, mm-hmm. maybe. Three. It it depends on how the story goes. Um, I haven't I haven't outlined the series. Mm-hmm. Um, it's difficult for me to outline. It, it, it's kind of boring. I've tried it before, but it's boring, and I don't. And I just I have to sit down and write it. Mm-hmm. And like I said, when I when I write or when I actually type it, uh, the story comes to me. I got you. And all so yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So are you, is the other series closed out now? It's, it's done and it's, you're on to this one. The EMP survivor series is done. It's five books. Mm -hmm. And, but a lot of the readers, there were two characters in there in books four and five, their names were Nico and Kate. They're very popular, very popular characters. Mm -hmm. I really want to do a spinoff on those characters because I did leave leave it open. Um, I left a series open for them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really want to get back to. But it's just a matter of time and and finding the time to do all this. Yeah. Yeah. Getting it all done. So when, Mm -hmm. you know, spending a lot of time working on post-apocalyptic fiction or whether, whether it's fiction, or even if you're just spending a lot of time with the technical matter of it, what did it change the way you view preparedness or, or the way you view the world or anything? Did you have some sort of mental shift while you were going through this process? Did going through the series, did it deepen that, that desire to, and that, that what is already ingrained in you to, to be more prepared or take you down any sort of weird rabbit holes? 
it makes you more aware of uh, of what you have. A lot of the a lot of the items that are in the books that that I talk about are items that we have, mm-hmm. and we've actually gone to our you know our bug out bag and we've looked in it and we have pulled out items to see oh this would be really good no that's not necessary and and we sit there and we look at it and um you know keeping keeping batteries for for flashlights uh that was also something important that people highlighted in the book because what we do is uh we color code the battery hmm. and we know that this battery you know was changed in the fall because it has a yellow dot on it uh it, i mean if this flashlight has a yellow dot mm-hmm. it was changed in the fall if this one has a red dot it was changed in the winter and so that's easy to because have you had i've had we've had flashlights blow up on it because mm-hmm. the batteries blow up yeah and um, i stopped using that's alkaline easy. batteries keep... for that reason yeah Right. <laughs> and um, and those things are expensive, too. So it, it makes you aware of that uh, just to, to be to be cognizant of the supplies that we already have on hand and things that we might need for the future. And one of them uh, is a generator. And we've had a lot of discussion about generator because we lost electricity for two weeks in Hurricane Ike in august and that was very uncomfortable yes yes it gets very uncomfortable here without ac during hurricane season <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh you know all the food all the food was spoiled every we were all cooking outside oh that was a very interesting um interesting thing that happened during hurricane ike when the electricity was off everybody went outside of their houses to work in the yard to talk to the neighbors we were sharing food. Mm-hmm. Someone had a margarita party across the street. So we all got to know our neighbors and everybody pitched in to help. But as soon as electricity came on, everybody went back inside and we didn't see anybody. And mm-hmm. I thought that was very interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. You know, I've always, having grown up here in the Gulf Coast, I've, I've always observed the part where everybody comes outside and then suddenly becomes very social and gets to know their neighbors. But that's interesting. I've you're right, and I've never stopped to think about it. As soon as the power comes back on, everybody's like like cockroaches scurrying, like back into the back into their houses. Back into their houses. You've got your TV. You've got your phone. And when and when the electricity's off, there's none of that. Yeah. You know, you don't have your phone to play on. You can't watch the TV. You can't go to the movies. You can't do anything in the side inside, especially when it gets dark. Hmm. Hmm. That is an interesting observation. I'm, I'm not sure what to make of that, mm-hmm. but that, that is really interesting. Well, very cool. Well, mm-hmm. Chris, mm-hmm. somebody listens to this today. They, they go out and they check out your books and they decide this Chris, Chris Pike, she is my brand of wacky. I like her stuff and they want to keep up with you. <laughs> Where do they go? What is the best way for, for listeners today to, to keep up with you? Yeah. And they're on, on Amazon. There's uh, several authors with similar names, but uh, I am Chris Pike. I'm not a guy. Uh, I'm a girl. There's been a lot of confusion uh, in my entire life over mm-hmm. my name. People thinking I'm a guy, but I, I'm, I'm not. So there's only one Chris Pike on Amazon, and that's the EMP Survivor Series and American Strong Series. I am on Facebook at Author Chris Pike. Awesome. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing with us a little bit about you and your writing and your books. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Aaron. Show notes, links to Chris Pike's books and other exciting resources can be found by going to in the rabbit hole.com slash E274. If you're watching this on YouTube, do all that YouTube stuff. Like this video, subscribe and slap that bell around because bananas are yellow. Get more survival goodness and help support the show. Visit ITRH.net to become part of the Roving Horde Armada. It's members just like you who really do help keep the lights on. Again, visit ITRH.net. With that, we wrap up episode number 274 from the Lone Star State. Till next time, stay safe and sound.